If I may start, sir, since Helen isn't here today, uh, I guess that makes me senior. All right. Although I'll defer to some senior. <laughs> uh, Mr. President, terrorism will be an important topic of the summit, as I'm sure you know. And of course, it's been on the agenda for all of us in recent weeks. The Allies so far have been unwilling to go along with U.S. efforts to isolate Gaddafi uh, or to uh, use force uh, against Libya. What do you expect to get out of them in Tokyo? Well, I think it's an indication that uh, our allies and those countries that are going to be represented there uh, have been taking increasing action with regard to the uh, uh, people's Councils there, that is, which is their term, the Libyan term for embassies, and uh, actually, I I hope that we can have a business like getting down to this problem and seeing what we can do together uh, with regard to resolving it. One of the things is we do have now a, a quite a good intelligence sharing relationship with them, but to see if there's more that we could do about pooling our intelligence so that we can learn of intended targets and uh, intervene, abort them. Last year, uh, as a result of what we've done so far, we were able to abort 126 uh, planned terrorist attacks. And uh, this action of ours was the result of intelligence information in which Libya I had planned 35 different targets uh, involving the countries that will be represented at the summit. The actions mainly taking place in, the, in those countries. Even though they were quite verbose in their ideas or their statements that uh, Americans were their prime target, but they would be finding the Americans uh, in those other countries. So. I'm not going there with the idea that we should get some grandiose statement. I think we all know how we feel about terrorism. I'm hopeful that we can sit down and work out what it is that we can do together to deal with this problem. Sir, how do you explain, given what you said about their being the primary targets uh, most often, how do you explain the, the reluctance of the other Western uh, democracies to uh, join you in your efforts? Well, I don't. I'll let them explain that. But uh, they do know the information. For example, uh, France's expulsion of some of the Libyan representatives was because of one of those 35 targets. That target was going to take place outside the, uh, or that action take place outside the American embassy there. The weapons had already been distributed, but the target was going to be the line of people that forms waiting to get into the embassy to get visas. Now, those wouldn't be Americans. Americans don't need a visa to come to the United States. But Frenchmen do, and other immigrants who might be there of other countries. And uh, they took that action. But this was, as I say, this is a sample of the type of thing that was planned in advance. And maybe it might be well right here to say that uh, I notice that the media is um, speculating a great deal on uh, would there be an upsurge because of the action we took. The upsurge was planned before we took the action. Those 35 targets are evidence of that. Those were immediate things that, that uh, Libya, Libya was ordering and supporting and, and being done. Mr. President, uh, you've spoken uh, many times in the past about how frustrated you personally get at the terrorism and how you punched many walls around here. <laughs> I don't see any holes. Could you give us an idea of what you might tell uh, President Mitterrand or Prime Minister Chirac about uh, France's refusal to let our planes at some risk cross French airspace? Well, I think this is a subject that has to be discussed, and uh, we certainly will discuss it. Uh, whatever the reason that they uh, uh, did not change and allow that uh, kind of overflight. 
I think it's something to be considered now and talked rationally between us uh, as to what the effect might be. Now, I happen to know that to our representatives uh, abroad, uh, we've had uh, General Waters uh, most recently, and we've had State Department uh, representation uh, over there talking to them. And uh, General Waters found that several of them were, were uh, reconsidering now with regard to that, uh, where it happened so swiftly that they didn't make a change in their policy. But also we found that uh, some of them were suggesting that uh, not that the answer be nothing of that kind, but that we look seriously at together real major action against Libya. Were you, are you suggesting that to this day you don't know what caused that uh, decision by France? No, I don't. Well, I take it though from the tone of your answer, uh, you wouldn't be thinking of any kind of uh, diplomatic or other type of uh, uh, penalty against France uh, as some of the more strident commentators have suggested. No. we're. We're going to the summit to uh, see what we can work out together. Mr. President, I, I thought I understood you to say just now that uh, some of your allies were uh, changing position and would be more willing now to take some major action, military action against Libya. Is that what you said? Some of us suggested that uh, uh, this thing, this type of action that we, uh, we had, if we were going to resort to the to force, that then perhaps it should be a wider based and a more all-out effort to uh, change the Libyan policy. Uh, now, that when I say this has simply been in conversation with some of our representatives that have been over there and briefing them and in their talk, I think it would be the kind of thing that they would want to talk about at the summit as to whether uh, whether we had reached that point or not. Do you think uh, the criticism that France has, has uh, had in this country because of its decision not to allow the flight was justified? In view that, for instance, when, uh, when there was the strikes against the French compound and the Marines <coughs> compound in Beirut, the French did retaliate and the Americans did not. So do you think this cr wave of criticism against France is justified in this case? Uh, I think it is difficult to understand that if we're all allies together and uh, supposed to be uh, sharing in the protection of all of our countries at one time to, uh, to deny the right of our planes to fly over. Yes, I, I have to criticize that. I have to say there's, I can't see any justification for it. Uh, they had the evidence, they themselves were taking action such as sending uh, diplomats home, Libyan diplomats, back to their, expelling them from their country. Are they and, still invited to the Statue of Liberty uh, ceremony? <laughs> I'm quite sure, yes. Mr. President, at this summit, the Allies are also likely to press you on another summit uh, when you might meet Mr. Gorbachev. Will you tell them, what will you tell them, and do you think he's stalling for no, I his thought, own gain? Or? I thought even in these, uh, uh, somewhat <clears throat> angry statements that he's made recently. He, however, indicated that, uh, or made no indication that he was planning any change away from the summit. I thought he kind of indicated in the most recent remarks that he was expecting to be meeting in a summit. He said that he's canceled the, the pre-summit planning meeting, which again sets back your uh, yes. timetable, I guess. Yes, so although... Uh, or do you think that's just... You expect that. Frankly, I don't, un I don't understand it because he himself has recently made statements about the evils of terrorism. And uh, I would hate to think that he's uh, being rather selective in it, that it's, uh, he's only opposed to terrorism if certain people are doing it, but not if others are doing it. Did you discuss terrorism in any great detail at the last summit? And if so, what did you learn of his position then? I can't, you know, I honestly can't remember whether that if it did come up, it wasn't in a major discussion. We were discussing more of the bilateral things between us 
and uh, the elimination of mistrust and so forth. When you do meet again, it will be a. Important. I would think that this should be discussed. Uh, may I uh, ask you, sir, given the five years uh, or so that you've been speaking out strongly against terrorism, uh, we still see that uh, tourists are afraid to travel to Europe. There are barricades all over yeah. this city. People generally are afraid. Uh, couldn't one assume that terrorism has already won this, this war? Oh, no. No, but I, I can understand right now. This is one of the reasons why I think that our allies will be very willing to talk with us, because uh, they have seen this attitude, this reluctance on the part of people to travel, and uh, it must be of great concern to them. No, you, terrorism hasn't su succeeded. Terrorism will su have succeeded when we decide that uh, we shouldn't take any action against it. Now, you mentioned a moment ago, and I didn't get around to that, about uh, in Beirut and the assaults made upon the various uh, armed forces that were there from the Allies, the British, the French, and ourselves, and you mentioned the French and us, and them retaliating and us not retaliating. I think there was a difference. The difference in our case that was so frustrating was that ours was a suicide mission, and those who had perpetrated it were gone. There was no way to pin down who was responsible. There are a number of terrorist groups. Uh, in Europe, they have their own, the Red Brigades, the Bader Meinhof uh, gang. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, we know that there are several different groups, and it was we were doing everything we could, and for quite a long period of time, to try and pin down what was the source, where did, who was back of this. We couldn't get the actual perpetrators. They were gone and because it was a suicide mission. But to find who had sent them, who had helped organize this, and we had great difficulty in pinning that down. And at times when we thought we had leads, we found that they did not lead to a target that you could hit without simply taking out a great many innocent people. Mr. President, haven't you said about that that you did, in fact, uh, I forget whether it was the Marine Barracks or the Embassy, but that you, you did find a target and we're going to attack it? We, the Israelis got their we finally, quite some time later, we finally were pretty sure that we had uh, the locale, the training ground where uh, these terrorists had come from. But again, there was a great problem of collateral damage around it. And in the meantime, it is true the Israelis staged an air raid, air raid against uh, that particular target. Mr. President, it seems to me by the conversation we're having and that we're all talking about military action. Is it your view that um, since the two raids on Libya, the next step has to be military? Won't make a decision about that till we see uh, what happens and what is necessary. But I'd like to remind you, we've done all the other things. We tried not only diplomacy, but then tried uh, trade sanctions and so forth. And uh, the violence not only kept on, but our intelligence revealed that it was being stepped up. So we decided that they had to discover that there was a price for what they were doing. Well, I'd like to change subjects again, but it's... I have just one more on the subject, okay. if, if you please. Uh, You've spoken so often before the attack on Libya about how we would hold perpetrators responsible. Public opinion had been uh, whipped up in, in favor of that. Do you feel at all in your decision-making process that you were bound to take some military action just because of the past years of, of increasing public fervor? No. We met and we discussed this at great length. And we were all, we truly had a consensus within the administration that we had no other choice, that we had to let them know there was a price. And we were very careful in the targets we picked out. The, uh, 
I cannot tell you that it wasn't a bomb of ours uh, misdirected that did the collateral damage to the innocent civilians there. But I can't tell you either that it might not have been their own missiles because we were interfering with their ability to target their missiles on our craft. They were firing their missiles just simply straight up and they were returning straight down. And if you recall, there was a photo widely publicized in this country of something lying in the street that's evidence of this in which they had claimed it was a part of one of the planes that they had. You remember there was one place where Gaddafi said he'd shot down 20 planes. Well, the M111s, we only sent 18. Uh, but what he was pointing out, or what they were pointing out was a part of an airplane, was the booster off one of their own anti-aircraft missiles, which shows these things were coming back down. So I believe before we just automatically assume that there was an accident in which one of our planes missed the target, we have to accept that it also could have been damaged by their own descending missiles. As a matter of fact, we were so strict about collateral damage that we gave orders that any plane that had any difficulty coming in, whether from clouds or smoke of previous explosions, whatever, that was going to interfere with their exact targeting, they were to abort. And six of the M-111s, or F-111s, I should say, did, and two of the uh, uh, naval planes off the carriers aborted their missions. I take it you have no regrets in the uh, week or so aftermath? Oh, I'm sorry. If, if it was one of our bombs, I'm sorry about that in that uh, missed target. But again, as I say, uh, there is just as much evidence on the side of it being their own missiles. Uh, on that point, Mr. President, you know the reports that Gaddafi's uh, daughter and daughter was killed and two sons were, uh, were wounded. Uh, was that intended or something you regret? Well, something you regret any time children or innocent people are uh, wounded or killed and hurt in, uh, in a thing of this kind. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I was equally sorry about a little baby that was blown out the side of an airplane and fell 15,000 feet to its death along with his mother and grandmother. I also feel badly about an 11-year-old girl that was shot down in cold blood for simply standing in the airport in Rome. I think that was uh, one of the deeds that Mr. Gaddafi referred to as a noble deed. Mr. President, this is an economic summit, although it may be overshadowed by terrorism. You're getting back to the subject we were supposed to talk <laughs> about. Good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I have two questions on allied to that side. The dollar has already fallen sharply against the yen. Uh, do you think it should slide even further? I prefer to put it that the yen has risen in value in comparison to the dollar. Uh, we have, the dollar, with relation to our trading partners, the mark and the franc and so forth, and the pound and the yen, this has been one of the great problems for us that's resulted in the increase of the trade imbalance that it made American products so expensive abroad. But actually, uh, you have to say that their recoveries, not Japan's, they were doing all right, but the other, the European partners, their, uh, their recoveries were not as great or as early as ours. And so I think it is legitimate to say that uh, their currency was undervalued as much as we could say that ours was overvalued. And with the yen, this is, uh, truly an, a great advantage because the biggest amount of our trade imbalance is with Japan. And I think that more than any restraints they had on imports, the yen and its depreciated value was the biggest advantage that they had in, because their products were the underpriced compared to ours. This figure, I don't know whether it has to change or not, I believe this is supposed to be the highest value of the yen against the American dollar 
that we've ever known. Certainly, I know it's true ever since well, the half century from, since World War II. It's, uh, this is the highest that it has ever been. Will you, will you be discussing with the Allies co ways to coordinate uh, moves to prevent currency imbalances? This will be very definitely one of the, one of the terms. We're not only discussing with them a new GATT round, the uh, tariff uh, treaties and so forth, but um, also, I think very definitely, there will be a, a discussion on monetary policy and uh, is there something that we can do to, uh, to stabilize it and quit having this volatility in the ups and downs? Uh, is there a point at which the yen, for instance, could get so strong against the dollar that it would reignite inflation here, given America's love of Japanese products? Oh, I would have a hard time believing that that, that could seriously affect our, um, our inflation rate, which incidentally, for the first quarter of this year has been running at an annual rate of 2.2 percent and that's the lowest it has been in many many years how are you going to be able to prevent yourself from gloating huh? how are you going to be able to prevent yourself from gloating well well the last couple of the last couple of summits uh, the difference was already there for example they were asking us about our policies that have created so many new jobs in our country. And uh, so we didn't, we didn't gloat, we just tried to be helpful and on tell the them what we've done. Sorry. On the monetary question, you, in your State of the Union address, you asked the uh, Treasury to prepare a study to see if uh, it would be useful to convene an international conference to reform the international monetary system. Do you, have you seen this study? Is there, do you think uh, such a conference would, is needed now? Uh, this is something, I think we're at the point now of discussing with our allies uh, whether we all feel this, that, uh, that this could be helpful. Um, Mr. President, uh, the Japanese are proposing to deal with their trade surplus with an even more fundamental revolution than the one that you proposed for this country. In getting it out of its economic problems. Given the trouble you've had implementing your proposals, are you prepared to wait for Japan to institute even more drastic measures? Uh, no, we've, as I say, we've, at the ministerial level, we've been continuing to meet uh, with them. And uh, the prime minister has his political problems, uh, just as I do here. He isn't free to suddenly issue edicts. He has to get a, the Japanese diet to go along with him. And uh, now this plan, it hasn't been adopted by them as yet. He favors it. And this is a long-range plan to um, uh, well, ba make a basic economic change. Their economy right now is geared toward providing great incentives for savings on the part of the people, lesser incentives for buying. And uh, they themselves, this study that, uh, that uh, you're referring to, this study is one that suggests that they would be better off if they provided more incentives for consumption, better living and so forth for their people, because uh, they, they don't have the real need in an investment way for the tremendous savings that that they have there. President, in Bali, you'll be meeting with the Philippine Foreign Minister. Um, it'll be the first time you've had contact with, personal contact with anybody mm -hmm. from the new government there. Um, will you be pledging any further aid, or what will you tell them? What will you tell them? Well, historically, we have had such a friendship with the Filipino people, and we feel that this is something we want to continue. And, uh, Yes, we, we know they have great economic problems. And right now, I think our figure, uh, whether it can be augmented or not, but our figure for this year is about $239 million in, in aid. And uh, we want to be helpful. Any international effort or only American effort you're talking about? Uh, in Tokyo, I'm talking. Uh, the summit in Tokyo. Would an would a international package for the Philippines, is that in? Well, 
whether it's a package or whether it's persuading other countries to participate. And Japan has been uh, a country that, like ourselves, has been greatly helpful of other economies. And I think that Japan is, uh, is looking at what they can do with regard to the Philippines. There's been some talk that uh, Mrs. Reagan's separate schedule to uh, Malaysia and Bangkok might be canceled in order for her to accompany you and this increased security around both of you. Has that been uh, discussed in your family? I have heard uh, no suggestion of anything of that kind. The, as far as I know, her schedule is still on. But uh, if you're asking am I concerned or not, I worry when she goes around the block. Mr. President. You're uh, not suggesting she stop uh, this trip. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I have confidence in those who are planning our security that if there was some uh, specific threat, uh, they would let me know. Mr. President, in the last week uh, we've been reading in the papers that uh, Mr. Stockman says you're not particularly intellectual, that Don Regan is a profoundly destructive influence on you. And even uh, Bud McFarland says that the disputes between Schultz and Weinberger have led to a paralysis in decision making. Would you care to defend the way you, uh, you run the presidency against those attacks? <laughs> I'd rather not comment on that, frankly. I've uh, seen and heard the, the statements and so forth. And uh, I did refer to it as fiction. And. Uh, I still feel it comes under that head. You got a lot of play with it the first time you used that line. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of play with it the first time you used that line. <laughs> in your uh, radio address Saturday, you talked, uh, as you have in several weeks in the past, about uh, decontrol of oil prices causing uh, this dramatic decrease around the world. Uh, how much uh, of that domestic policy on your part has caused it, or how much really has been OPEC's own internal problem of not being able to set production quotas. Uh, isn't part of it really what's going on uh, among OPEC? Yes, I'm not. Uh, the only thing that I'm saying about any hand that we had in this uh, was our deregulation. I think it was uh, when we looked at what had been going on back here in the oil lines out in the country and so forth, and um, there was no question but that government regulations were imposing artificial restrictions on an industry and causing some of the problems. And while everyone rushed into print to say that uh, deregulating, and as I recall, I signed the order uh, right after I'd been sworn in. I think we stopped in a room in the Capitol and I signed the order for deregulation. Um, the, all those statements that uh, this was going to turn loose inflation, that the prices were going to go up and we're going to penalize the poor for their heating oil and their gasoline and everything else, uh, almost immediately the prices started down. And now this latest thing of down, I think, is, is the result of a lot of factors. Um, first of all, um, conservation, which uh, reduced the the amount that was being used. Uh, this was one factor, but again, it was the oil glut with the prices up where they were. Everybody rushed into production. The, the incentive to explore, to find uh, new oil, uh, just suddenly lit the old law of supply and demand, and suddenly the demand uh, wasn't as big as the supply. So to keep their share of the market, they began uh, lowering prices. And this is pure, we, pure uh, capitalism at work, that some of the domestic producers now in trouble brought it on themselves by overproducing and overexploring. Well, or they went in in the anticipation and spent money and borrowed money in the anticipation of, of an ever-expanding price. You remember that the talk was going around that uh, oil was going to uh, be $40 a barrel. and then found, for example, uh, we are not using as much oil in the United States today as we were. 
And in these recent years, we also reduced the percentage that we had to import. It's smaller. And the second, we've changed where we were importing it from, from the OPEC nations. Uh, the bulk of ours came, started coming from Mexico, the Caribbean, uh, uh, Canada. And uh, so th this, I, as, again, as I say, I think it's supply and demand. And uh, the one thing that we have to watch, and this was the thing that caused the confusion uh, when the vice president spoke, and he was talking the, the truth uh, and trying to call attention to one thing, and then they would be in a position to start bringing the prices back, back up. We just wanted to warn against uh, anyone attempting such a tactic. Can we go back to Tokyo okay. for one minute? Yeah, I was just going to, earlier on you said, when we were talking about terrorism, that you wanted to work out a way that you and the Allies could coordinate your efforts on this, but that you didn't expect anything grandiose. But no, no, summits no. always yeah. result in, a, in communiques, um, and I think yeah. people are expecting that this one will, will result in a joint communique on terrorism. Well, are we it wrong very, to very that? well, but what I meant was, we didn't want to just go there to get some great big declaration about the evils of terrorism and then think we'd done our duty. We want to get down to the nitty gritty and get some agreements as to how we're going to deal with it. But then you think if there is a political communique, as there always is, that's, that will be the subject of it, in your view? Oh, no, no I, I think any communique is going to touch on what the whole agenda would be. So arms control, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Mr. President, what did Rick Dempsey uh, mean when he said you'd call Gaddafi a, a name when that you were on the bench? That was the last question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, that conversation? Oh, I do. <laughs> I, I was taken quite aback by it. <laughs> I don't remember. Mr. President, thank you very much. Well, always nice to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. You're all ten. Thank you. Is there any chance we're all going to meet Mrs. Aquino on this trip? Uh, no, there won't be any stop at the Philippines unless she's, she decides to come to the uh, ASEAN meeting instead of sending her foreign minister. Have you suggested that? What? Have you suggested that? No, that's up to them. <laughs> I think some countries will have heads of state there, and the President Suhada will be there. I don't know whether others will be represented by ministers or not. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.